Hello, welcome to my talk. My name is Clement Saltana from the School of Forestry at the University of Canterbury, and I'm working on durable eucalypts together with the New Zealand Dryland Forest Initiative. The title of my talk is Breeding Durable Eucalypts for Wood Quality, and it's really an introduction in the NZDFI uh, breeding program. <laughs> so it deals with the uh, um, with the breeding program, which is at the center of the NZDFI. And we can ask questions, why is um, the NZDFI structured around the breeding program? Um, it's because we think we can make large gains and with, by breeding. And it's very obvious if we look at agriculture as an example, on the right, you see um, um, a banana and the wild banana on the right and the, and the banana, which we now commonly get in the shops. And you see, you see huge advances, uh, advances being made. And there's no reason to think that trees are any different to that. It's just that the breeding programs are in earlier stages in, in forestry or with trees. And very often there's uh, wood properties not even um, included. But I would argue that it's very important to include wood properties in breeding programs because if you go back to the agricultural example that we can't sell any bananas if they do not taste good. Likewise, we can't get a lot of money out of, of trees if the wood is not up um, to its specifications and we need to sell it for firewood or some lower value products. So we need to think about wood quality and wood quality um, is really a desired set of wood properties um, for a certain application. It has no meaning if we do not put it into context to a product. So we would we need to know what does the NZDFI actually want to grow wood for? What are the target products? And we find that information in the NZDFI strategy. And there's a just um, a, a, a little um, cutout of the NZDFI um, um, strategy, which states right down here, to produce um, naturally durable strong timber for laminated veneer lumber, LVL, decking and posts. So these are the products uh, which we, which, which we uh, in the end that if I try to target. So now we need to think what are the properties which are essential for that. And this is for posts, it's ground durability so that they last a long time in the ground and not um, decay. It's color, color for um, sawn timber. And for LVL, that's mechanical probably size, stiffness, and strength. <laughs> Additionally, to the product properties, there are also some issues which we often have when we process timber. And for the eucalypts, we know that there are growth stresses in the trees which uh, impact solid wood processing. And we know that it's sometimes very difficult uh, to, to dry the timbers without getting collapsed defects during the, the, the drying of eucalypts. <coughs> so we know what we are looking for. Now let's see what uh, species which we can use and what species are in the NZDFI um, breeding program. And it's largely based on three species. That's Eucalyptus bosestuana, Eucalyptus quadrangulata, and Eucalyptus globoidea. And you can see they are quite durable species, the hardwood is of high durability, class one or class two, lasting more than 25 years in the ground. And they're also exceptionally stiff, so good for LVL or structural products, and uh, 20 gigapascal is probably um, close to the theoretical maximum, maximum you can get for wood. They also have color, and you see um, there are the two minor species we have in the program. We have them in for the color, all the before, because of the durability. And we think that we might be able to create hybrids between the species and therefore um, <coughs> um, increase the genetic uh, diversity in there and also the, the, the properties in the wood. <coughs> so here are the species, we have the products, we are knowing the traits where to look for. And they are the typical forestry traits like growth and form and health and propagation. I'm not talking much about these here. Form, we can almost think about the wood quality because it depends the yields of our timber. But then there are 
growth strain, very important. And the hardwood properties, because only the hardwood has color and only the hardwood is naturally durable. And really, instead of normal growth, we want to know how much hardwood is in the trees. So the ranking of these individual trees traits will be different priority for the different species. Some have naturally better form than others, uh, so others are naturally more durable than others. <coughs> so if we include these traits into a breeding program, we also need to have a means to measure them. And measuring growth strains is notoriously difficult. With the common technologies to measure uh, growth strains, it takes you um, <coughs> um, minutes or hours to measure a tree. And we can't really do uh, afford that in the breeding program because the breeding program really um, lifts of large sample numbers to as the phenotype many, many trees. And for growth stresses, what are the problems? So if we do solid wood processing, we cut the tree, we release the stresses, and we get these huge deformations if the growth stresses are high. Like here, a horizontal bandsaw splitting a log and it has completely deformed. Or if we do rotary peeling veneers for LVL, you get this end cracking due to the growth stresses. <coughs> now, the School of Forestry came up with a method to measure trees quickly for growth stresses. And it's less really measuring the growth stresses, but measuring the problem, the deformation we get uh, through, um, uh, caused by them. And we call it the splitting test. We grow trees only one, two years to a, to a, you know, a certain size, a couple of centimeters thick. And then we split them all along the stem with a bandsaw and we measure the opening. If there's a large opening, it's a bad tree. If there's a small opening, it's a good tree. And uh, we measure the problem directly and we can do that very quickly um, on a tree and therefore cope with large sample numbers. <laughs> so in a um, SFF, Sustainable Farming Fund um, project, which has now been successfully completed, we screened almost complete um, breeding population of the NZDFI. What wasn't screened was Eucalyptus global deer. But you've seen we've planted um, close to 20,000 trees, which we have assessed for growth strain. <coughs> and we have the data and we got you know, data like that where we can rank the individual families that seed from one mother tree um, according to growth stresses here. And here it's um, um, quadrangulata. And you see the bad families up here have a growth strain of 2,000 micro strains, while the good, uh, good trees have no 25% less growth strain. And if you plant those trees, we will have an improved resource with less processing problems with higher yields. Now for hardwood, <coughs> um, um, we, we need to do different tests, but the, the, the really uh, what we want in our trees is the hardwood. We are not really making much money out of the sapwood because only the hardwood is durable and the hardwood um, varies a lot between trees. So here you see eucalyptus bosestuana trees, all the same age, the hardwood is highlighted red, and the largest trees, which we would have selected if we just um, select for, for diameter, doesn't have the most hardwood, almost nothing. While smaller trees can have much more hardwood, and that's really where the value is. So we need to measure hardwood quantity as a, at the growth trait, and we also need to measure how good the hardwood is. And again, we see a huge variation. Uh, we see some trees have a lot of extractives in the wood. Others have very little extractives in the hardwood. And the ones with a lot of extractives will be the more durable timber. While if there's no extractives in the hardwood, nothing gives the color in there, then um, it's very unlikely to be um, very durable. And now we need all the means to measure it, like for growth strain, these traits are not straightforward to assess. We need some wood samples. So um, <laughs> the first thing we did, we um, developed a corer um, and um, we came up with, color innovation came up for us with this um, corer. It's battery powered, it's lightweight, it's fast. We can get a decent wood sample non-destructively out of our trees. Um, within a couple of seconds, and then we can look at them 
and assess how much hardwood is in the trees. So that's straightforward for the hardwood quality, how durable it is, um, it's more difficult, but we also came up with a way, how can we do that quickly? We can do it with near infrared spectroscopy and IR, where we're basically looking at the, at the color of the wood, but the color in a, in, 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 in a wave numbers, in, in, in wavelength, which the human eye can't see. And if we do that, to take the NIR spectra, that takes only a couple of seconds. And we have calibrated our machine for the extractive content measured conventionally. We get really good correlations and we find trees with more than you know, 16 up to 20% of extractive of the masses is wood. They are durable and uh, the other ones with low extractive content are very unlikely to be durable. And we can um, predict them and, and, and find those three um, quite accurately. So we have ways to assess large sample numbers and we need to be able to um, um, assess large sample numbers because the NZDFI breeding program is, is reasonably large. So if you look at all the different trials we have put in of different species, at the moment there are 70,000 trees out there which hardly have been assessed, some um, will be assessed. No, many more trees planted because the trees have been um, thinned and are going to be thinned and you see they are distributed all over, um, <coughs> um, or predominantly in the east coast of New Zealand and the warmer regions. Okay, how far are we with our phenotyping um, efforts for Bosestrana? We have um, a, a large part of the breeding populations assessed for hardwood trays and also for growth strain. Um, the last uh, trials are um, to be worked on um, this year and the next year. Quadrangulata, we have assessed for growth strain. We are starting um, to do hardwood assessments um, this year and for global year. We have started for hardwood assessments. We will finish um, these hardwood assessments as, as well this year, at least that's the plan, but we haven't assessed them for growth strain. From the data we already have, we have been able to make selections, identify superior genetics, which um, also includes growth and form um, and data, not only the wood quality traits, but it, uh, and, you know, the wood quality and, and forestry traits. So these selections have been made and those trees are now also propagated under one billion um, tree uh, funded program and um, that has um, start, just started and by 2021, next year, um, we will have produced 300,000 elite plants. So with improved genetics um, of Eucalyptus processana and Eucalyptus globuliana, global deer, that's a mixture of seedlings and, and clones <laughs> and they will be available under the Xylogene brand so that the forest grower can be sure that they have um, you know, the best planting material available when they um, establish those plantations. <laughs> okay, what, um, what is the future uh, for the NZDFI breeding program? We need to continue the phenotyping. We need to go to the next breeding cycle, make it a second generation, put in, in those trials. Uh, we want to continue our clonal breeding program. We're looking at the genetics, economics, right? There's, there's a lot to be done and we have secure funding till um, the end of 2022. And we are now in the process of, um, of uh, trying to con get to secure continuing funding for this ongoing work, not only in the breeding space, but also in the, in the, in the related um, um, areas of, of, of processing the wood, of growing the wood, of, 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 of tree health and so on. <laughs> so um, this work wouldn't have been possible with a lot of uh, collaborator, PhD students and master students at the School of Forestry, a large team at the NZ DFI and funding from the government and, uh, um, and the industry and um, I would like to thank you all for watching and 
I hope to see you soon in person.